Hey guys, I know we haven't been around very much lately and there is good reason for that. We've been quite busy lately working on the boat because circumstances changed a bit and even though we wanted to be in the water quickly, we were rushed a little more because the yard fees at the yard that we were at have basically doubled for us. They decided to raise per foot, electric, and for liveaboards and on top of that, put the liveaboard fee for each person living aboard. So it just became exponentially more expensive to yeah, be there. We might as well have rented an apartment and then worked on the boat. It would have been pretty much the same price. But as you can see, a little fire under our butts is kind of a good thing because look We're where we on are. The water. You can see that the boat is in a different place now. <laughs> and it's a lot more relaxing and we have a lot more time to do what we need to do and make these videos. So that's really good news. So because we were in such a rush, our footage for this episode is a little bit choppy. We filmed as we could and then basically not at all. So we're gonna give you some explanations throughout the video of what kind of was happening at those times. So here's the footage we have guys and hopefully it's a good update and from here on out, we're basically gonna be back to our old schedule. We are back to patterning the Dodger. As you can see, we've got tons of this tape out. It's holding the Dodger in place. We did end up cutting down these bows two inches each because a lot of you guys in the comments said it was too high, so we cut them down just a little bit. Now we have the boom as low as it's possibly gonna go. It's clearing that bat strut by an inch, but keep in mind the boom is actually gonna sit you know, a few inches higher than that, three to four inches higher than that when we're actually sailing. So I think we have enough room. We just wanted to pattern it with the boom at its absolute lowest point. It's never gonna be lower than this. We used a lot of tape. <laughs> the first time we did it the way the Sailrite video showed where they just used one strip down the middle and it kept falling. So now we've got like three. We've got tons of tape on this thing and it's, it can't, <laughs> I can't move it. So it's really, uh, it's really good. We also did this this morning. We're epoxy coating the supports for the fridge. Basically, we're mounting the fridge higher than where it's thin. Now that we have the countertop done. We never ever experience this because it's normally so hot, but we epoxy coated this like a couple hours ago and it's still super tacky because it's actually cool out today. High is 70 degrees. It also has dandelion fluff, don't mind that. <laughs> This piece is not going to be seen at all in the boat, so all we care about is to waterproof it with the epoxy, and it's just going to hold the fridge up. We are continuing to work on our Dodger. We did, however, realize, I guess kind of a faux pas on our part, but also a PSA, the Sailrite handrail kits, or grab rail kits, do not include two grab rails. They are just one, even though they mention grab rails. And even, and even though the rigid support strut kit comes with two rigid support struts, the grab rail kit only comes with one grab rail, even though you need two. We're going to install the Dodger as if we don't have the grab rails, and also as if we don't have the rigid support struts, and we're going to add them later. That is an option. So we're going to install it with the webbing, essentially, first, and then we'll do the rigid support strut and the grab rails in a couple weeks, or maybe when we're in the water. Probably so, in the water, Probably yeah. in the water, yeah. But it'll be okay. It'll still be a Dodger. It'll still function. That's all we can ask for. That's all we can ask for. So what are you doing, Jordan? Just finalizing the pattern, marking the bows. Just following the instructions. <laughs> following the instructions, that's a good thing. All right, guys, so we have taken over the breezeway today at the boatyard. It is kind of the perfect place for us to sew the Dodger, and we're just doing some pattern detailing, so you can see the pattern there on the table. Once we do all this detailing, we should be ready to start cutting the Sunbrella. It's pretty exciting. Haven't had a Dodger, you know, for a while. The Dodger that was on the boat was a piece of crap, but it's going to be really nice to have a nice custom Dodger. And we're reading the instructions as well as we can. So I'm working on adding that green line, which is a half-inch seam allowance. And that's actually the line we're going to be cutting on and cutting the fabric on. So just got to do that all the way around both patterns. Get out of my face. 
States. Fortunately, we don't have a table that's wide, wide enough for this. So we're just doing our best. We're cutting using our hot knife. Hopefully it'll make quick work of this. Alright guys, so it is the next day and behind me is the results of all day yesterday. So that's the front panel right there. I'm getting ready to cut the vinyl for the window and then the rest of the panels are actually cut in on that table right there. Yesterday it was a lot more tedious than we had anticipated so um, we just, you know, hammered it out and got it done. We had a lot of people coming by because we're in the common area of the yard but this is what I'm doing today. I'm gonna finish up the final cuts and actually start sewing. I didn't sew one thread yesterday, it was all cutting. Cutting out the vinyl now. It's got a little bit of a wave to it, as you can see from being up in the roll. We try to manipulate it a lot. We got a lot of the wave out, but there, as you can see, it's still there. So we have the window in place and we've used basting tape to set it there. And now we have the binding tape on top that we are going to sew on. So let's see how that goes. Day five. How you doing? Day five of this Dodger build. This is day three of sewing, or at least day three of us being in the breezeway. And this is what we've got. So it's been hard to film just because there's been so many people walking in and out and I don't wanna film anybody that doesn't wanna be on film. But it's coming pretty good. We only have like two more seams. No, we have one major seam left to do and then we just have to do the window, then the snaps, and then it goes up on the boat. So it should be going up on the boat today. Randy's marking the cuts we have to make for the window now. And then we just have to sew this back zipper down. And this has been a very tedious project. We thought it was going to take like two to three days and it's going to end up taking like five or six. So that's the way it goes, though. Right, Randy? Yep. The last stitch has been done. This is going on the boat now. And there you go. It's a little droopy because it's not secured by anything except the bows right now. But, you know, once we secure the front edge and then we put the webbing straps on the back should look pretty good. Definitely at least fits to the point where we're going to be able to use it. it. may not be perfect, but I think it looks pretty good. So let's get this thing fastened up and then we can forget about it for a little while. So we just wanted to mention a link to Sailrite's going to be in the description of this video. There's a couple things about the Sailrite Dodger we wanted to talk about and one was really difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. It was pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this Dodger, it would work for you if you have a good amount of time, a good amount of experience with patterning and sewing. But honestly, it was much harder than the sail kits that we got from Sailrite. We found that those were much easier and that's because they cut everything for you. You don't have to pattern it. You just basically sew. sew. Together, yeah. The patterning is, uh, is a bit of a challenge. It's we a bit of a challenge. Be friend. Now the kit could work well for you if a couple things are true. One being probably that you have a lot of time and two being probably that you have a lot of patience. Even if you don't have a lot of experience, experience will help, but I really think time patience, and patience yeah. are you know key to getting the Dodger perfect. And we just didn't have a lot of time. So a lot of what we did is imperfect and we're gonna have to go back and you know redo it. Biggest point or the biggest upside of the Dodger kit is obviously you're saving a lot of money. We had a few people stop in while we were working in the common area and told us how much that they spent on their Dodger and Bimini setups. And it made it seem a little more worth it to us to do the kit, even though it was a little bit stressful and a lot of work, it does save you a lot of money. Yeah, it's probably about a third the cost of paying someone else to make you one. But you know, you kind of think about, you know, 
you're paying yourself to do it. So yeah. it it's is what it is. It's up to you, like time versus money. Are you willing to pay extra to save your time or are you willing to spend a lot of time to save that money? Exactly. Alrighty, so we've been kind of doing a little bit of everything today. We've been waiting on our arch to be delivered. So we got some jobs done while we waited. For instance, we put some more fiberglass down on the cockpit sole. We've got two full sheets on there and then a couple that were lifting areas that we found were a bit low. So hopefully that'll be fairly level and then we can fare it coming up later this week. We also emptied out the cubbies in the salon area and went ahead and painted those with some more bilge coat. In addition, Jordan was down here and he sanded the pedestal and went ahead and put a layer of bright side on as well. So we've been pretty productive while we wait for that shipment, huh? Oh yeah. Just doing lots of little stuff. Well, I guess not little stuff, just the weather's the weather's nice. The weather is very nice. <laughs> so it makes us more productive. This is our solar arch. You see the frames on top for the solar panels, and then the arch itself comes in three pieces. So we will definitely give you a closer look at this in a little bit. We had our arch delivery the day before Thanksgiving, and it came late. So we ended up working into the night to try to get it installed. We didn't fully install it, um, but we ended up having to run to Tampa that night and we came back Friday after Thanksgiving to get this job done. And here is what our arch is currently looking like. So we have each side and the middle on. We're just trying to fine tune exactly the placement of the middle. It came with this long section on this side, two separate pieces for those middle bars and then this long section on this side. So, we're just trying to make sure that those middle bars are in the correct placement. Jordan's using brute strength to pull this together. You can actually see that on the film, so that was pretty good. So we were having a bit of trouble getting the two sides to come together, and so we decided to use two ratcheting straps to kind of force the two sides to come together because we have it pretty well set on the port side, but the starboard side didn't want to come in any further. So we're hoping to kind of pull the two sides together. So, the tower in general looks pretty good from afar. Now, we did pay someone professionally to do this for us, so we were expecting a little bit more out of it than, you know, something we could do ourselves. And I think we did get that. However, it's not crazy good level. You know, it, there's things that we, if you look at it, it's like, huh. Like, why is it like that? And we noticed that one of those things was this, right here, this gap is much larger, it's about an inch larger than this gap over here, between here and here. So that's off. We also noticed that these legs, when we met, when you measure the true length, is actually, I think, a three quarters of an inch longer than this one right here. Not, not enough to really notice when it's on the boat, but when it's off the boat, we were like, that's kind of weird. We thought about even cutting the legs, but we're not gonna do that at the moment. The legs are actually easy to remove off the boat. So we were just trying to figure out if we had this thing pulled all the way in based on the measurements from here to here and here to here. And lo and behold, that's not perfect either. So we know that these two pieces are butted up against each other right in the middle right there because that's how I put it together. This between here and here I believe is 17 inches and this between here and here is 18 or 18 and a half inches. And so we were trying to pull it in that extra inch, but then we realized we could do what, Jordan? We could do this. And we can see we that We can see that that's together. butted up together. So, so we can't make it go together anymore. So these aren't welded on, they're perfect. They're not evenly placed in the middle. They're not evenly placed. So we've done the best that we could. The tower's not perfect. Just like everything on our boat isn't yeah. perfect. But we only paid... It was a great price point. Yeah, we only paid 1500 bucks for the tower. So that's the redeeming quality of it. Um, a better one would have been a lot more money. So at first glance, this tower looks pretty good. And the frames look pretty good on the tower as well. However, let's take a closer look. Now if you look from below, you can see that those holes just are not lining up with that bar that's going across and those holes need to line up because I'm supposed to drill new holes in that bar to be able to mount these frames. Thing is even if I can somehow get those frames above me on there those solar panel frames 
they don't even fit the solar panels. I gave the welder the specific measurements of the solar panels and the solar panels are about a quarter inch too big for the frames so the solar panels don't even fit in the frames. Maybe we're better off sticking to DIY all the time because if you don't do it yourself and you pay someone to do it for you when it's not right it's even more disappointing I think. Yeah. Yeah. But look at this Dodger man. <laughs> There's a Dodger there and the Dodger's 50% done as well. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to go back and do other stuff. Just fine tuning. It at least serves its function. So yeah, it, there's that. It's functional. We're going to leave it. Obviously, you can see there's wrinkles in it. So yeah. we kind of have to go back and fix those. We don't even have the webbing permanently installed <laughs> no. on there. But generally, it's it at least serves a purpose. It, you know, it covers the companion way. I'm going to go ahead and rivet the collars together up there to finish off the arch installation. And I'm going to take the solar frames down and I've got to modify them so that they can fit our solar panels. So we just wanted to talk about the arch real quick. The actual arch itself was pretty good and we did pay the full price for that to the welder. Now I called him and talked to him about the solar frames and we didn't end up paying for those solar frames. We actually ended up ordering our own aluminum and bolting together our own frames which were you know they work pretty well and I think they're a little more heavy duty than the ones that the welder ended up making. So. As far as the arch goes, it ended up working out pretty well and we didn't pay a whole heck of a lot of money for the arch. So just like the Dodger, <laughs> the arch wasn't perfect. <laughs> it wasn't fully DIY, but we saved a lot of money on it. Yeah. And we think it'll work. As you can probably tell from around me, we are working into the night yet again. This time we are fairing the cockpit sole. We've gotten all the layers of fiberglass that we want to on the cockpit sole and now it's just time to fair it and make it nice and even. We just went ahead and gave everything a quick sanding and a wash down to remove any ambient blush and now we're going to be fairing this and then we'll be sanding again. And then priming. We've created a shrine to West System Epoxy. <laughs> Got an oil lamp and a citronella candle. That's burning citronella oil. That's burning citronella wax or whatever. <laughs> Trying to keep those bugs away while we do this. And you can see our tower. It's illuminated above our heads. So as you can see guys, the cockpit sole has been fared. It's not perfect because we're going to be kiwi gripping it anyway, so you're not going to notice, you know, any slight imperfections. It just looks pretty good and we are going to be priming everything and then reinstalling the pedestal. So I've got everything cleaned up, wiped it down with fiberglass solvent wash uh, by Interlux uh, to prep the surface. It's been sanded and taped off and we're ready to go. We're ready to prime. Let's go. Let's do it. So as you can tell, we've been kind of full steam ahead. We drill filled, drilled all these holes here and now we've just got to sand some and you open up these a little bit more but I test fitted the pedestal and it fits pretty good and because we drill fill drilled everything the core is protected and we did a measurement comparison of, of how much laminate we laid up versus how much was there before and we actually laid up a bunch more laminate than even the original designer so we're pretty comfortable with how strong the floor is now. So we watched some videos from Edson on how to reinstall our pedestal and they recommended using Sika Flex on the bottom of the pedestal. We're also using butyl tape on the bolts too, so we're kind of doing a combination approach. And yes, the cockpit sole is just primer, so we're not really stressing the paint right now. So now that we caught you up on what's been happening, I want to tell you a little bit about our plans. We are going to be heading up to the Tampa St. Pete area to spend the holidays with family 
as well as pick up our dinghy, our life raft, and hopefully a motor for the dinghy as well. We then plan on heading to the Bahamas in the new year. We're hoping to catch up with some friends down there. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and a comment down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to follow along with our journey and the little bell if you want to know each and every time we upload a video. See you guys. And I promise it won't be three weeks till the next video. <laughs> Bye. I've got it right and I got it wrong But I learned my lesson hanging on Come sit here with me by the fire And let it go for a little